Among the shocking revelations, first husband Mickey Rooney was such a womanizer that he cheated on Ava, then considered the most beautiful woman in the world, in their marital bed, while she was in the hospital recovering from an appendectomy. He went through the ladies like a hot knife through fudge, she said. Gardner went on to marry bandleader Artie Shaw, another kind of bully, he was always putting me down, and then, most famously, Frank Sinatra, who left his wife for her. While seeing Sinatra, Gardner also had an affair with the married Robert Mitchum. I was crazy about him, she said. When she told Mitchum that she was also seeing Sinatra, he ended things. Gardner was a teenage virgin from Grabtown, N.C., when she was discovered by a talent scout in 1941. She'd grown up poor and uneducated, yet her mother always knew that Ava had what it took to be a movie star. So did she. After a screen test, she was signed to a seven-picture deal with MGM, and quickly became sought after by nearly every leading man in Hollywood. On her first day on the lot, she met Rooney, the five-foot, two-star of the wholesome Andy Hardy, a series. I wanted to fuck you the moment I saw you, he told her. Gardner was 18 and innocent. I was shocked, she said. I still didn't know he was the biggest wolf on the lot. He'd screw anything that moved. After Rooney came Howard Hughes. I never loved him, she said, adding that despite the generosity he showed her, paying for her dying mother's medical care. Then, in 1945, she married Artie Shaw, who'd also left his wife for her. But now Gardner was smoking three packs of Winston's a day and getting drunk constantly. She felt so intellectually insecure around her new husband. One week after their first anniversary, Shaw dumped her for another woman. The bastard broke my heart, she said, and throughout her life she picked the wrong men. Including George C. Scott, who Gardner said would often drunkenly beat the shit out of me. Gardner had two abortions during her marriage to Sinatra, and a courtship that began with a fighting all the time, boozing and fighting, ended the same way. They divorced in 1957, but remained close for the rest of their lives. She died in 1990, at 67, from pneumonia.